My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Rimworld and the Northeast Miskatonic. Now, in between the previous episode and this one, I have made a few changes to the base. The major change is we have a second greenhouse almost ready to go, barring the construction of two more skylights just to illuminate this area here. And as before, as you can see right here, we've gone ahead and constructed it around the geothermal vent. That will give us a free source of heat, so the power drain or the heat drain coming from this radiator here shouldn't be quite as substantial as it ordinarily would. I've also gone ahead and extended our trapped corridor here and we have doubled up the amount of spike traps that we have uh, protecting this little kill zone here. So that should help thin out any would-be attackers which should give our colonists a strong advantage in any firefight that may occur. I've started to expand the hospital as well as we can see. So uh, in due course, these walls and this door shall be removed. This flooring shall be expanded to include this new hospital wing, if you will. And given that I've done a bit of research off camera, including the unlocking of hospital beds, we shall start building some hospital beds in here. And the plan is to have a dedicated room for surgeries, a dedicated room for harvesting the organs and autopsies and then a general rest area for our colonists. The final thing of note is we've also unlocked the high-tech research bench and we've now got one of those constructed as we can see right here and we've moved our basic research bench up into our little workshop area as well and that's freed up some area down here in what has become our little common area. Other than that we haven't seen too many changes Quinn is a little injured as we can see. I did have a captured colonist in here. Sadly, they attempted to escape. And as we can see, Quinn did suffer an injury during the breakout attempt. They were stabbed in the torso. However, as we can see there, 34 out of 36, her wounds are nearly fully healed. So we kick off today's episode with an event. A lone survivor has arrived. It's been so long since they had contact with other humans, it appears they have lost their humanity in the wild. And as you can see here, we have Antonia Bruce. Now, she does have a very nice cooking skill there. Decent medical, plus a flame of passion for that, as well as social and construction. So she could be somebody it's worth trying to tame. The highest animal handling skill we have is six, and I do believe you need a lot higher handling skill to be able to tame a wild person. I do believe it is Amy who has our strongest animal handling skill. Yes, there we go, six. And as we see, we cannot tame Bruce because the animal skill is too low. However, we could try and arrest them. I've never tried that with a wild person, and I'm not sure if we can then recruit them and convert them in the traditional way you would a prisoner if we do arrest them. So in the morning when everybody's awake, I do think we shall try that and see if that's something we can exploit. As we've just got the notification there, Quinn has now fully healed from her injuries, which is absolutely fantastic. So there's no infection or sepsis to worry about this time around. As we know, sepsis has been a problem for the colony so far, as we lost Izzy to a bout of sepsis, unfortunately, and we had to say goodbye to one of our colony founders. So with our latest sermon now completed, I do think we will send Amy down here and attempt to arrest Bruce. There is a 100% chance of success, so we should be, well, we will be successful in this attempt. And then we'll see what sort of interaction we can actually perform with Bruce once she has been arrested. There we go. Now you may notice here, I have disallowed use of this door. That is because initially we want our colonists, or our prisoners I should say, to be housed here where their mood will tank and it should make converting them a lot faster. Once they're a fully fledged mem uh, member of our religion, we shall then transfer them into this prison cell, which is a little more luxurious and therefore we should be able to recruit them faster. So that's the aim of the game there. Now let's just go ahead and see if we can indeed attempt to recruit and convert Bruce in the traditional prisoner handling manner. We can convert and we can release. However, we could also just straight up execute for the ideology reformation points. 
or we could try a violent conversion. This is the first time we'd ever be able to try this, of course. Has an expected quality of 100%. That would give us either, well, the highest chance is satisfying at 65%, but that would not award us any development points. We only have a 20% chance of having a spectacular outcome, which would give us the development points we're so desperately seeking here. So I'm not sure whether we'll do that. We could instead. What's the uh, quality here? Okay, so as we can see, either effective or masterful would both give us development points on the outcome here. And given the 57 plus 19% chance, we have a very high possibility of at least getting one development point. I do think we'll try this one first of all. So let's begin this ceremony and see what happens. Masterful conversion. So not only does everybody gain plus six mood bonus for six days, we've also increased our development points by two. So we now have three out of 12 in total. Let's see then. Yes, so Bruce has now been converted immediately to the sect of Eldritch, so that is a great start. Q will now return her to her cell, as we can see. And what we will do is we'll now allow use of this door, and it's a shame that we can't assign prison cells to people, because it would be nice to be able to instruct Q to bring her over here. We could instead do that and see what happens. There we go, so now Bruce will be placed in the more luxurious and hospitable of our prison cells. And the interaction now will be to... Ah, uh, no, we cannot... Okay, so we cannot convince her to join. We can release, we can execute. Obviously, we can also convert, but we have achieved that already. Okay, then I guess we'll just do a sacrifice of Eldritch and hopefully gain a few more development points. Before we do that, should we build a Lecton? We could get an extra 15% if we were to do that, so it makes sense to do it. Any boost we can get down here is obviously worthwhile. So yes, let's go ahead and construct a Lecton first of all. We'll construct it out of bone. I think that would fit in quite nicely with the aesthetic and the theme. And we shall have Haruka prioritize working on that lectern. Okay, there we go. That's a lectern now installed. Obviously, everybody has now gone to sleep apart from her. Oh, no, Haruka's just gone as well. So we'll wait until the morning for the sacrifice of Eldritch, at which point Bruce will be offered up as a sacrifice. And hopefully we shall get some development points from that. As we can see now, the expected quality has jumped up to 91%, which is really, really good. We could get a little bit more here if we were to construct a third pew that is facing our ideogram. So that's probably not a bad idea. So again, once one of our constructors is up and about, we shall make a start on that. Once the pew is constructed, we shall sacrifice to Eldritch. And we shall bid farewell to Bruce. Okay, as we saw there a few moments ago, Q is up and about. She's just fed our prisoner. That will be her last meal, of course, because now she's going to work on this bone pew, at which point we shall start the sacrifice ritual. Okay, we could also instead opt for a cultish sacrifice, obviously performed here at the altar, and that should give us a greater boost to our standing with Shib Nagurath. However, I'm more inclined to do it via the ideogram and the ideology for the development points that that would provide. So let's go ahead once this uh, altar has been constructed. Q is still working on it as we can see. There we go. Now let's see what sort of effectiveness we're going to get. 96%. There's nothing else really that we can do to improve the quality factors. And with a 96... 96? What? 96% expected quality. 
we can expect a uh, satisfying or spectacular outcome a combined percentage of course being 79 and that should so we've got basically a 79 percent chance of getting at least one development point so let's begin the sacrifice of eldritch so our colonists start to gather now and here comes q with the sacrifice Bruce is attacking after being harmed. Bruce has become a manhunter. But she's already dead, so uh, no concerns there. <laughs> Q explained the guts on the floor. Well, everybody witnessed what you did, Q. They don't need an explanation. And there we go, a satisfying sacrifice of Eldritch. So there you go, we see plus five mood for six days and an extra development point. So we now have four. Because we had a successful sacrifice, a wanderer, Beerhoff, has joined and they do have a relationship. They are Svetlana's husband. So we'll accept Beerhoff's membership. They, because we've got this as an outcome of one of our ideological rituals, they should already be a member of the sect of Eldritch. Indeed they are, Bastian Beerhoff. And let's have a look at Bastian's skill set and his biography. Undergrounder, Geomancer, and Kind. Well, the Kind one doesn't conf uh, sorry, it doesn't agree with our cult, as we can see. It conflicts, but so be it. In terms of his skill set, quite a handy fighter, both ranged and melee. Decent at building and an expert in animal handling. So that's good. We didn't have really anybody on hand who could handle animals. Pardon the pun. So it's nice to now have somebody who can fulfill that role. Obviously, because Svetlana and Beerhoff are wed, we will want to upgrade this bed now to a double bed for them. So we shall uninstall the single bed and we shall build a copy of the bone double bed as soon as that one has been removed and what we shall do is are any of our builders currently free anita's building a power conduit will prioritize the double bed i think that should take priority here in the meantime we can look at beerhoff's work schedule as always firefight and patient are set to level one Handling will be level 1, which means we can now start to reduce the priority of everybody else. Hunting, level 1 as well, so you will need a ranged weapon. We do have one available spare, so that's all fine. Construction, level 1 as well. Mining, you can be priority number 2. Fishing, we'll put number 1, but we don't have any fishing zones set up yet. And then the rest will be taken up by cleaning and by hauling. So welcome to the colony, Mr. Beerhoff. I hope you fit in quite nicely. We need to assign this bed, of course. So Svetlana and Beerhoff will now share a room, which is good because we still have one spare in that case. So should we capture or have anybody else join the colony, we have a ready-made bedroom for that person. Okay, so as we see now, the walls in the hospital have been removed, so the hospital has been expanded in size. Let's just check that the power conduits that I asked to be constructed have been. Yes, they have. So what we can do now is put down some lighting in here. All the skylights have now been installed over here, but we still have one small patch of darkness in the far corner. So let's see if we can put a single skylight in just there. We have four glass panes available. Oh no, we can't. It won't allow us to. Well, never mind. So what we can do now is start planning what we want to grow in this greenhouse. This will be food. We have primarily food growing here and a little bit of heel root, so that's okay. We don't really need to grow any more food over here, I shouldn't think. Instead, what we shall have first of all is a fairly large-ish strip of cotton 
cotton plant is also always, I should say, not also, it is always a useful utility plant to have, especially for crafting items of clothing, of course. The next growing zone, we shall have a little bit larger. And this one, we shall instruct our colonists to start growing some. Perhaps tobacco or smoke leaf. Or even cycoid plant. Yes, maybe we'll get into drug production and start selling drugs to wandering caravans for increased monies. We'll have another growing zone here. And along the top. And then we can squeeze one more in there. And I think here we might do a bit of food production just to supplement the potato plants. Maybe corn, as that does have a decent yield, as we can see, 22. Yes, we'll go corn there, since it's not the biggest, but it has a high yield. Over here, we shall grow... What do we want to grow this time? Maybe smoke leaf for more drug production. And in the final one that we have, I'm going to chance it and see if we can... Well, we could grow fibre corn. That produces a small amount of wood. Yeah, we'll go for fibre corn. I'm not sure if a full-grown tree is permissible inside a technically enclosed structure. But fibre corn absolutely is. And it doesn't give as much wood as a tree does, but it doesn't take a book up as much space and it can be grown indoors. So now that we have a second married couple in the colony, Svetlana and Bierhoff, there's every chance we might start to see more colony children. That would be a very interesting, it's a nice way to gain extra colonists of course. In the meantime however we need to work on our hospital and we need to put down or expand the flooring like so. The two operating beds need rearranging, perhaps moving down here. We'll have an autopsy table in this area as well. And given that we've unlocked the technology to construct hospital beds, we'll have the hospital beds filling up the rest of the space. So the first potato harvest is being taken in as we can see. Amy giving a helping hand there, dropping off the harvest of potatoes. I think it's probably not a bad idea to get rid of the insect meat from inside our freezer and instead we'll have the potatoes hauled over instead. Okay, we cannot prioritise hauling the potatoes so there mustn't be any room in here for them although we have 7 out of 8 stacks. So, Oh, Amy is putting the, uh, the insect meat back inside. Okay, so what we're going to do then is go to storage Go to the raw food, raw meat, and we're going to untick the insect meat. The only cause we'd have to use insect meat is to produce kibble when we start to have our own animals. Obviously that's not something I have high on my priority list right now, so the insect meat can be discarded and placed elsewhere. One thing that is becoming apparent is three bathrooms is Probably no longer enough to uh, ensure everybody can use the toilet or bathe in peace. So in the coming days, it's probably worth expanding this to allow extra stalls to be constructed. That should allow everybody to be able to take care of business with a modicum of privacy. And that will stop people getting too upset. In the meantime, however, we have a new quest, Rewarded Conflict. So, Constantine Matthews, the Prime Fist of the 4th Infantry Division, wants you to help save one of his caravans. They're near Innsmouth and they're being hunted by tribes people from the Confederacy of Brania. If we were to signal them, they would come and attack us. As we can see, there's one archer chief, five archers, four berserkers, nine heavy archers, eleven hunters, three penitents and two warriors. So that's quite a few people. We would have five days before they arrive, and they would arrive on foot, so no drop pods. Now five days should be ample time for us to shore up our defences, and I'm thinking having gun turrets down here and down here, so we have a field of crossfire. 
with our colony station behind the far castle wall embrasure over here with one manning this manual gun turret and one manning this manual gun turret and between that would we be able to take down that many raiders i think we probably would given the fact they're only tribal all right so we've got the defenses now constructed we can see we've got two gun turrets on either side and i've also discovered that beerhoff as a geomancer can create sentinels so we have two of those in position as well however while I was doing all of that we've had a psychic ship drop down now obviously the psychic ship and the mechanoids are inactive until they are interacted with however I think taking on a large group of raiders and also dealing with the mechanoids would probably be a bridge too far for us at this stage so I've gone ahead and declined the quest with the tribal raid and instead what we're going to do is take on the mechanoids. Now to do that I'm going to play it nice and safe and I've queued up the research of mortars. Once we've got the mortars we shall shell them from a safe distance to aggro them and then they should then head towards our base and we should be able to take them out. So hopefully we'll be able to achieve that in today's episode. But if not, it'll give us something to look forward to in the next one. One thing I've also done is I've just strengthened this wall here by making it three deep. Now our bone wall doesn't have the most hit points, but it should at least buy us time should enemies attempt to come in through this way or through this way, rather than through our main entrance way. Over time, of course, we are going to want to replace this with some uh, granite walls. And I think what we're going to do on that end is actually queue up a large mining order for some granite. And using that, we'll create the granite blocks and we'll change these to castle walls, especially on the outer skin of these walls. And that should really help slow the enemies down. As we can see, the psychic droner is currently emitting at a medium level to all males and if we look at our colonists that's given them a negative 17 mood modifier in fact that psychic drone is impacting some of our colonists more than others here we can see it's a negative 22 for Beerhoff, whereas with bone it was only a negative 17 so obviously we want to get this mortar research done sooner rather than later. That way we'll safely be able to aggro the mechanoids without having to send somebody out and put them in harm's way. So yes, the sooner we can get that done, the better. Well, very interestingly, we've had the Royal tribute collector arrive on the map and as we can see they've immediately engaged the mechanoids so this map actually solved a little bit of a problem for us okay so they didn't wipe out the mechanoids but they seriously inflicted some damage well two ciphers I suppose that's better than nothing now should that now means that the mechanoids will not go back to sleep so if we were to try and draw them now, it would be very difficult. So we really need this research ASAP. And thankfully, Gabe is on his way to continue his research efforts. So hopefully we'll be able to get that sorted sooner rather than later, as I mentioned earlier. And Q has given birth. This is Slick, a male. High passion for cooking and animal handling as well as minor passions in planting and crafting. In terms of skills, we have decent shooting, decent construction, decent artistic, decent intellectual, and decent mining. Creepy breathing isn't the best, but it's also not too much of a problem. Physically adept is pretty good. And body modder, well, he might be a bit annoyed that we have no body mods available, but I'm sure he'll quickly adapt. 
So yes, welcome to the colony slick. Obviously we now need to unpause the usual garment orders. In the meantime we can set up Slick's working priorities. I think as far as Slick's concerned we'll have him focus on mining and construction with a little bit of cooking thrown in as well and we'll pretty much leave it at that for Slick. Over the coming day or two he should be able to equip some clothing for himself. We have a few weapons lying around so we could immediately get him to equip a revolver for example and there we go he's now dressed himself which is always nice and we can assign him this bedroom here so that's now Quinn's third child so Q's third child we have Quinn, Haruka and Slick the three siblings of the Northeast Miskatonic And no sooner than did he join, and Slick is in a mental break, and he's going to go on a food binge. Let's see if we can't get somebody to calm him down. Ideally, Q. Little mother-son interaction might sort him out. Let's see what happens. No, sadly, it had no effect. Well, I think this is a good place to leave the episode today. We got very fortuitous with the arrival of the Empire's Tribute Collector. And they have, as I, uh, as I said earlier, taken down just two Scythers, which is a start. But they have inflicted some damage on a few other mechanoids. I noticed there was one Scyther remaining, yes, with 11 conditions that need tending. Everything else looks to be in stable health, however. So... In the next episode, we'll have to deal with this. We're about, what's that, 55% way through the research of mortars. Once we get a mortar set up, I think we're going to be okay. Or at least we'll be able to aggro them towards us. And hopefully our defences will handle it. I think between what we've got now, two, four, six, eight, ten colonists, four turrets, and obviously the uh, defensive structures... I think we will be okay. Hopefully we'll suffer no casualties, but time will tell. So, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I apologise for chickening out on that large raid quest earlier, but I just didn't think we were in any sort of position to take on such large numbers, especially on 500% difficulty, because I've got to imagine they'd start breaching the walls, and just completely bypass our security system. However, we do have this mechanoid cluster to look forward to. So some small trade off there, even if there's far fewer mechanoids than there were tribal raiders. So yes, thank you very much for watching. As always, ladies and gentlemen, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.